Jimmy Page's journey as a musician was anything but conventional, a path carved from the untamed wilderness of early rock and roll and blues. It was clear from the start that his formative influences were not only about technical proficiency, but the emotional connection he found in the work of musicians who had already begun reshaping the soundscape of modern music. As he ascended to the pantheon of guitar greats, Page never shied away from acknowledging the debt he owed to those who lit the way before him. In an era dominated by seismic shifts in popular culture, it may come as a surprise that one of the first names Page mentions as an influence is Elvis Presley. This is not, as some might expect, due to Presley's guitar work, but his role as a visionary. For Page, Elvis was more than a performer. He was a symbol of music's power to transcend boundaries. The harsh realities of the Deep South, where black and white workers toiled side by side in cotton fields, provided the soundtrack for Presley's early life, a fusion of musical traditions that he almost instinctively brought together. Page saw in Elvis the ability to blend these influences into something both transformative and universal. It was as much about the energy Presley exuded as his technical skills, and for a young Page, it was the energy that would ignite his desire to explore rock music. However, if Presley laid the groundwork for this interest, it was Johnny Burnett who truly stopped Page in his tracks. With his rock and roll trio, Burnett captured something raw and untamed, a sound that was both unpredictable and fresh. Page has often spoken of the moment he first encountered Burnett's music as a revelation, one that shaped his approach to the guitar. The guitar work was, in his words, abstract, completely unlike anything else on the scene. It was not merely a matter of chord progression or technique. Burnett's playing was an invitation to push beyond the boundaries of what the guitar could do, an ethos that Page would carry with him throughout his career. If Burnett was a solitary figure in Page's early years, Jeff Beck was his companion in arms, a fellow traveller on the path of musical discovery. When Page and Beck first met, they were bound by their shared obsession with records by artists like Gene Vincent. They spent countless hours poring over records, dissecting the guitar lines, each trying to outdo the other in their quest for mastery. Yet it was never a competitive rivalry in the negative sense, rather, it was a bond formed over their mutual admiration for the work of Vincent's guitarist, Cliff Gallup. Page has often reflected on how challenging it was to emulate those early rockabilly guitar parts, particularly with the rudimentary equipment they had. But where many others might have given up, Page and Beck found inspiration, their determination to improve rooted in a desire to replicate that fiery, ferocious sound. Among the records that left an indelible mark on Jimmy Page's young mind, Link Ray's Rumble stands out as a pivotal moment in his musical awakening. The raw, distorted power of that instrumental track did more than just intrigue him. It changed his perception of what a guitar could do. Released in 1958, Rumble was unlike anything Page had heard before. It was a statement of rebellion, delivered without words, through a sound so primal and evocative that it was banned from some radio stations out of fear it would incite violence. For Page, Rumble wasn't just a song. It was a challenge and a revelation. The overdriven sound that Ray produced with his guitar, combined with the slow, menacing riff, pointed towards a new frontier in rock music, one that emphasised mood and atmosphere over melody and technical precision. It gave Page a glimpse into how the guitar could serve as more than a rhythmic or harmonic instrument. It could convey a sense of danger and attitude all on its own. This realisation had a profound effect on the way he approached his instrument, later leading him to explore distortion and feedback as essential components of his own playing style. The first time I heard the rumble, it was like, that's, that was something that had so much profound attitude yeah, to it. Yeah, it really does. Ray's defiance of convention mirrored the rebellious streak that ran through much of Page's early career. Where Ray had slashed his amplifier speakers to achieve that distorted sound, Page would later take it further, using a bow on his guitar or manipulating electronic effects to create sounds that had never been heard before. Ray, through Rumble, had shown him that there were no rules, only the desire to push boundaries. It was this ethos that Page carried forward into the ferocious live performances and groundbreaking recordings of Led Zeppelin. 
Hearing rumble for the first time wasn't just a moment of inspiration for Paige. It was the beginning of a lifelong journey to harness the raw energy that Ray had unleashed. The simplicity and power of rumble made it a constant reference point in his pursuit of sonic innovation, reminding him that sometimes less is more when it comes to capturing the primal essence of rock and roll. This constant push to refine and expand his abilities led Page deeper into the heart of the blues. Muddy Waters and Elmore James were not just names to him, they were titans of a genre that spoke to the raw emotions he sought to express through his own playing. It was Muddy Waters' recordings that first introduced Page to the visceral power of Chicago blues, but it was Elmore James who provided the technical challenge. James's mastery of slide guitar was something that initially perplexed Page until by chance he witnessed Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones perform one of James's songs. The mystery was in the tuning, and with that realization came a new level of freedom for Page. The influence of Elmore James can be heard most prominently in one of Led Zeppelin's most formidable tracks, In My Time of Dying. Here, Page channels James's slide guitar technique, but with a fire and intensity that is entirely his own. It is a testament to how deeply the blues had permeated his playing, not just as a technical exercise, but as an emotional outlet. The track stands as a homage to the musicians who had shaped him, yet it is undeniably Page, his signature style searing through the composition. Throughout his career, Page maintained an acute awareness of the giants on whose shoulders he stood. Far from seeking to overshadow them, he paid tribute through his own music, continuously honoring their contributions while forging his own path. In recognizing his influences, Page demonstrated an almost paradoxical humility, a giant of rock guitar who never forgot the importance of those who had come before him, who understood that no matter how high he soared, he would always be connected to the roots of the music that inspired him to pick up the guitar in the first place.